Excuse us, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> One, two. Well, ND filters are a great way to bring creativity into your images. They extend exposure and allow time and movement to progress through your image, creating exciting and ethereal effects. So for this video, I'm going to take a look at each of the different densities of ND filter and some subjects you can use them with. Well, first up then is the polarizer. Now we know that this can add contrast, increase saturation and reduce glare, but it can also be used as a basic ND filter. Turn it so it has no polarizing effect and it can be used as a standard two-stop ND filter. Now this is great for shooting waterfalls when you want to extend the exposure beyond the one second mark and the polarizer is often enough to achieve this. Plus of course you can use it for its polarizing effect to reduce the glare and increase saturation in any foliage and as it's a filter that most photographers have, it's a great introduction to ND filters. The first official ND filter is the Freestop Standard ND. One stop darker than the polarizer, it can either be used on its own to increase the exposure time by three stops, or can be used in combination with the polarizer for a total of five stops. Another great filter to use when shooting waterfalls, perhaps when the light levels are higher, you can use this to extend those fractions of a second exposure times so that it become that magic one second. And once you go beyond three stops, you go into the realms of the extreme ND filter. And the first of these is the six stop ND. This is the leaf filters little stopper. And it's a great filter to use in daylight conditions where you want to get those exposures over that one second. Plus of course, it helps you achieve more creative shots bright sunny days. This is a great filter to use within the city and can be used to add blur and capture movement in traffic, transport and people. Now beyond the six stop ND you have the filter that started all the craze, the 10 stop ND. Now my first version of this was a BMW filter screw in type but like many people I now use the Leaf filters big stopper, a seriously dark filter and a very creative one too. With this little beauty, you can slow down time and extend your exposures up to around the one minute mark. A lot can happen in that time and you can capture it all simply by placing this filter over your lens. Now this filter has been around for quite a while now, but because of its popularity, the manufacturers have taken things one step further and introduced an even darker version. Now the 15 stop filter is all the rage and this is the Leaf Filters version, the Super Stopper ultra dark, ultra effective and ultra fun. Now personally I use this filter for two reasons. The first is to capture long exposures on cloudy days but perhaps those overcast days where there's very little breeze and the clouds aren't moving that fast and so you need a three or four minute exposure to capture any movement at all in the clouds. Well the super stopper is ideal for this. The second reason is because of the cameras I'm using. The Olympus AMD cameras use a micro four third sensor and therefore the minimum aperture I can use is half of that I can use on a digital SLR. So my limit is around f11 which is two stops less than I could use on my old Canon 5D. Also the lowest ISO setting is only 100 which is one stop more than the 50 I could achieve on my Canon 5D. Altogether that's three stops that I'm losing without the filter in place. So I often need a stronger filter to achieve those one minute exposures on a brighter day and this filter solves that. So those are your ND filters and of course you can combine any of them together to increase the overall density and the overall exposure times. So what can you shoot with them? Well, anything that moves. But here are some common and not so common subjects to use them with. Well, at the coast, you have water and you have clouds. Both move and both can be blurred for a creative effect. Now you can use just the two elements on their own or you can introduce a static subject for contrast. Now this is probably the location most people use their ND filters but there are other places too. So we've seen that you can use the six stop filter effectively in the city to add blur to people and traffic, but you can also use a 10 stop filter here too. Now you may have seen my recent video that I did shooting long exposures in London, capturing movement in the cloud above the London architecture, which is used as my static subject below but you can also clear your street views by using a 10 stop filter and a one minute exposure instead of using say one sixtieth of a second. 
Well, another subject that works well, but perhaps maybe not so obvious, and in fact needs a bright sunny day with no cloud in the sky to work best, are power stations. The cooling towers of a power station emit steam that on a calm day rises vertically. Capture this with a 10 stop filter, and your image goes from this to this. Just what is it that you want to do? Now, many urban environments also include water, and where there's water, there's reflections. Now, on a calm day, these appear naturally, but on a breezy day, they can soon disappear. Not with an ND filter though, add one of these over the lens and bingo, your ripples are smoothed out and your reflections return once again. Now the ND filter can also add another quality to your images, simplicity. A picture that contains very little can have as much impact as one with a dramatic view and you can use your ND filter to add calm and serenity to your images. Now where the ND filter does work well is by adding impact to ordinary views. At one thirty of a second, your scene may be quite pleasing but ordinary, but add an ND filter and your picture comes alive with movement and impact. So the ND filter, whichever one you use, is a creative tool to have in your camera bag. But use it wisely. Don't just use it on a scene because you've recently bought it. Use it with purpose, use it creatively, and use it for impact. Thank you.